backups. We have Stephen Carpenter from the Deftones. You guys might have seen Devin Townsend play. Uh, Animals as Leaders, Killswitch Engage, Lamb, Lamb of God, Greg Cock. Uh, so many artists that have been like kind of joining the Fishman Fluence team. And it's been absolutely a wild ride for the past five years. We've kind of taken the pickup market by storm. We put out bass pickups last year, and we were super lucky to meet up with an artist like Mike. Mike's had such a great career. And, uh, you know, I think, what, how long was it? It was like two years ago. You and I were like just hanging out, and he was like, I have this amazing bass, and I literally am scared to take it, like, take it on the road. It's been my bass for 30 years. It's, it's been this, like, this iconic piece. I'll let him talk about it. But since then, like we we are now getting past the signature series thing. Artists that go in and they dial their pickups in and they say like, this is what I want, this is what I want. Mike's had a proven career. He's written so many, like he's been played on so many great records. His bass has been on so many great records. And now we're moving forward with these new pickups. This is the launch of this, the Mike Inez Legacy Series. Yeah. And, and, and what this Woo. is, it's his, it's his exact bass pickup that you can buy. It's legitimately, it's like the, the quintessential Mike Inez tone that's been on every single record, and now you can buy it. So Mike, tell us about the bass that you had, the history behind it, the Moonburst. Yeah, that, that, that. Martin Famous Moonburst. So, 1990, I'm playing a Nazi Osborne band. Uh, yeah. <laughs> highly recommend that uh, for <laughs> young musicians. Join the Ozzy Osborne band, and he'll, uh, it's, a, it's a college education. <laughs> freaky college education. So Ozzy bought me this bass. And, uh, it's a German-made bass. We were cruising around in Europe. and um, uh, So I, I really like the Warwick stuff, so Ozzy bought me some, to, so I had backups. But there was this one special one. I call it a moonburst. It's like a sunburst, but with the silver into like uh, black kind of. Uh, we call it a moonburst anyways. So this bass has been my workhorse for 30 years. We've done... Uh, God, I've jammed with everybody, put this in a weird perspective, from Carrie King from Slayer to Carrie fucking Underwood. <laughs> and everybody in between, no lies, swear to God. It's been um, on Slash Records, Ozzy Records, uh, Alice in Chains Records. Um, I, I use it on session work a lot. It's just been my workhorse for 30 years. It's on its fourth headstock. It's been smashed smashed as shit. Sorry about my language. I just can't help myself, so it's just a bad talk. This is rated PG-13, so okay. kids, get out of here. <laughs> All right, my brother. Went there. So, it's been smashed up. Um, so, the original uh, uh, EMG pickups were in it, and I was, me and Zach Wilde back in the 90s would, would, would do stuff like pour beer on our heads, and uh, we had these stages where I would jump, run behind run behind the drummer and Zach would be running in front of the stage and I would spit loogies in the air and Zach would catch him in his mouth going <laughs> <down the road. laughs> So that, that shows our behavior in the early 90s, right? Uh, Ozzy loved it, right? He just loved our energy. So, um, so we poured beer on our heads and, and one time, uh, we're in, I think we were in Germany and it zipped out that my Moonburst bass, it, which sounded killer at the time, it just zipped out. So my tech goes to a store, buys another set, puts it inside of um, the Moonburst, and the thing sounded incredible. It sounded better than any of my other 40 Warwicks. So uh, for 30 years, I've been trying to get this tone. I, and my, I, it's the only bass I carry around every gig uh, I go to. We just got off a 32 country tour, Alice in Chains. So we did, a, I think it was, the count was 139 gigs, 125 cities, 32 countries. So this is the one bass I carry around on planes. Everywhere I go, I make sure I have my number one bass. My biggest fear was I was gonna plug uh, into this bass one day and just like basses do and guitars do, just it doesn't sound the same. Or I go to do a record and, and we plug it in and it just doesn't have the, that special magic or, to it. Or know? the airport hits your your bass or your guitar with a forklift, right? Oh, yeah, or, my, or my wife breaks it over my head. <laughs> One of the two. But, um, so, so then uh, Ken, you know, he said, hey, I think we're, we're, we're going into uncharted territory here. We're walking, literally our footprints are the first um, uh, footprints on the moon here. You know, it's really cool. So I was playing a gig in Boston, and Kenny comes by, picks me up at Soundcheck, and we grab this bass, and we go to the Fishman Factory in Boston. And I thought I was going to be sitting there playing all day. And the first thing he did is took the strings off it, 
they put it in this like kind of MRI machine is the way I describe it. And it, it was really weird. We, we put it through and it shows a digital, like the throw of the magnets off of, off of this base. And so that's the hard reality of that base. This is the hard reality of this is what your base is. This is what it's doing. This is how it's interacting with the universe. So, um, so I did the gig. Another five, six months go by. He uh, meets me and our engineer from the last three Alice in Chains records, Paul Figueroa. We go into his home studio and with uh, the famous Frank Felbo. He's right there hiding. Oh, is he? Yeah. Frank. Oh, the man. The ladies' man. <laughs> Everybody and, cackle at him. And we <laughs> grinded and we grinded and we grinded and grinded until we got it. Um, it's like, okay, the low's there, the low's there, okay, and okay, now we'll go to the mids. No, that's not happening. So we, we, we're, we're adjusting and Frank developed a system where we have slide in pickups on this old P base going in the back. So and it's hooked up to a computer. So we're, we're trying to match that throw of the, of the magnets. It's, it's just so futuristic and, and cool. But, we, we come to find out that those pickups that were put in that um, the base, they were they were fake EMGs from uh, from Germany. There was a guy between like 91 and like 95, he passed away now, that was doing these off-brand, but he was putting the logo on them. So, for, so I've, I've been chasing this tone for 30 years and, and with, with every pickup company really. And, Ken was the first guy to come up to me saying, we're gonna go from the other way. What does it sound? Okay, here's what it's doing. What does it sound like? Let's, let's, let's chip it out, let's dig it out. Yeah. So, use a hockey term, we got in the corner, and, <laughs> and, and you know, we scrumped it out. Yeah. And um, yeah, so, so we're really excited. I mean, uh, like, I got the prototype about maybe five or six, Frank uh, painted, did the woodwork and painted, painted me up this base. Uh, which is, I'm going to leave here all weekend. If you guys want to play it, you're more than welcome. Put your energy into it. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. But, um, so, uh, oh, where was I? I was straight. <laughs> no, we were, we were just about the, we're at the oh, point. Oh, Frank, yeah, Frank gave me the, uh, yeah. this space. And so I immediately took it on the road. And so, uh, you know, we're doing big shows without that nice and chain so. You know, a lot of arenas, we got, we got like Bruce Springsteen sound guy and the monitor guy is like, he brushes a little guy. And so it's a highly professional sound crew. We've got Clara Brothers. So uh, we took it to sound check, plugged it in, and the thing was a fucking beast. It was just so, uh, it came out just, just screaming like an animal. Uh, I plugged it into a, uh, a couple Ampeg SPT2 Pros from the 90s and a couple A10 cabinets. And so, so we immediately threw it in this tour. So it's been, this base already has been in about 20 or 22 countries, I reckon. Did South America, did Europe, did Eastern Europe, Canada, the States. Um, I have three prototypes I took, one white, one sparkly blue one, and then uh, and this one. But, so uh, I can't express how, like, we, in Inside. the 27 years I've been playing Man in the Box, oh, Rooster, uh, any of these songs, uh, I have not played it without my Moonburst bass. So, Right when I got this, uh, and we're switching it up, we're, we're doing drop D tunes with it, and and uh, like so, for me to just play Man on the Box or Rooster with this thing is a huge statement from us and our sound crew. And our sound guys love it. It's so uh, even. So when I'm doing these bass switches, they're not having to do a lot of tweaks out front, you know. And like, um, well, that's the other thing. When you when you have like three or four bases, I mean, before uh, you have to travel with a lot of bases. You have A B rigs like all over the world. Yeah. When you I have your three pickup. sets of ten volts, th uh, three set, three volts of ten bases each that go all over the planet, right? Yeah. So when I say we're manufacturing these pickups to be exactly to his spec, like what you buy off the shelf is what he has in his base, and there's no e there's no real like difference between. I mean, you've probably noticed that like when you move from one base to another, it's the same pickup. It is, but each in different woods, it, it, and I love this about it. It it, it uh, lives in different bases in kind of cool ways, you know. So. Uh, I've, this one especially, I, I used it for drop D stuff, like down that river, or uh, we die young, stuff like that, down in a hole. Um, and then there, there's two voicings on these things. So the first voice is when we're down, uh, and well, actually grab your bass. Let's oh, let's do a little bit of this. Yeah. Really, like, do you guys want to hear Mike play a little bit? Yeah. I don't think they want you to play. I don't know. I didn't. <laughs>
working on the jacks next. So what does voice want? This is fun. <laughs> so, anyways, that's kind of a we got a distortion thing. Mesa uh, uh, cab, cabinet head up here. But basically, the, the the thing we're trying to get um, is the presence of this thing. It just has such a strong voice. It just it, it cuts through every mix. I'm building a new recording studio in my house right now, so I'm, I'm tr I can't wait to get in the studio and really start experimenting with pedals and different heads and uh, like 12 strings and I got 15 string Warwicks and fretless and um, this is where like uh, me and Justin Chancellor are very similar. We just like to get in studios and freak out and you know and uh, we're, we're tone heads and so that's why Ken's the same way you know and we approach this pickup uh, tonally you know it's like okay. What does the thing sound like? You know, let's, let's go from the other side back, you know? So it was really, the, the way it came about and the way Frank does uh, approach this whole thing, I, I've never seen anything like it. I, I guarantee you this is the best bass pickup in this building. Yeah. Me and Ken will fight any fucker who says it's not. <laughs> So, Once again, sorry about my language. So what? So what is? So what are the controls on the bass? Like you have voice one, voice two. Let's 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 do okay. voice one. So th that's just a master volume, just straight up and down. So voice one is pushed in. There's two voices to this pickup, this particular one. There's four knobs on here, but that's because we took one of my old basses, and uh, there was four knobs on the original pickup. So this one doesn't do anything. And I'm thinking of having Warwick make them more. That's a dimmer switch for my because uh, I'm blind now. And it has lights on the top of my newer bases, so I think I'm gonna put a dimmer switch here, so on the dark, those dark arena stages, I can see what's going on. But then it's real simple. There's a treble and and a bass. It's we, we tried to make it as easy as possible. So on this one, like here, I'll play wood. The chords, everything is just nice and even. The, the, the sustain on them too, it's just great. This thing will just keep going and going and going and going. That's all the overtones uh, that my, my moonburst does. So stuff like, you know. I probably put some of that distortion back in real life. It's just really like even and right? So we got natural stuff. Alright. So like uh, that's the thing I love about my band. It's just uh, we're we're real ropey and Everything's slidey and slippery and kind of uh, dissonant harmonies and we're just kind of freaks it. I think our big secret with Alice in Chains is like we, we don't know what the fuck we're doing. It just kind of sounds cool, so that's what we're going with. I think there's a life lesson in there for you kids. Don't get too distracted by all this bullshit. You're just in the room to make a bunch of fucking racket. That's it. That's it. Just make a bunch of noise. You know, we're all in this together. You know, just make a bunch of noise. I want to hear your noise next. You know, it's like a, so. Anyway, we can get these things out to people. To our our sound is so consistent with Alice in Chains now. You know, our our, our uh, front of house guy Troy loves them. Um, it, it's real important for us to, when with our in ears, to hear what's going on, especially with singers. Say, um, I'm doing heart shows with Anna Nancy Wilson, and tunes off the bass. So she's a bass player herself, but she always wants the bass super loud. So I gotta make sure it's my job to get her a good tone that she can sing off of, you know? Because uh, if she can't hear it or if it's crappy, then it affects Ann Wilson's performance. So, you know, um, uh, Ozzy is a bass freak. Ozzy's, turn up, get my two, two more stacks on stage. I love playing with him. I'm like, oh, excellent. Okay, hey, cool. And uh, so it's such an important uh, part of my job is to get. Uh, everyone else a cool tone see so now in the in ears with these it's just so nice and even uh, some people want distortion some people don't want distortion some you know um, so what about like down tuning too as well, well? Which I was just gonna say Jerry loves like um, 
you know, to hear, like, you know, the, 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 the slides and the bends, you know, you know, or, or you know, you gotta hear the slimy stuff. Portal stuff. Yeah. This amp's blowing up a little bit. Right? <laughs> just wanted every nuance of the big to, to, to translate through you know for, for the in-ears so I'm, I'm probably the only musician that thinks this but it's important that the front of house guy gets all of that shit too it's, it's more important to me what the audience actually hears and what the musicians I'm playing with I kind of am third on that list I really uh, I'll, I'll take the hit every time I'll sacrifice my my monitors and my in-ears to, to make a singer more comfortable I mean if, if it was up to me, uh, when I was in the Aussie band, he's the one guy that goes like this. He says, uh, uh, get as much bass shit as you want. And I said, okay, so I, ha I had six 18s, 12 15s, and 24 10s going at one time. Plus side fills, flown side fills, and, uh, and, and wedge, you know, wedge nest everywhere on this stage. It was just craziness, you know? So it literally, it shakes your bones where it's hard to, <laughs> it's hard to play. So like, uh, uh, Jerry and the guys, they don't like that thing. Uh, Soundgarden was kind of the same way. It, it's just too much for the singers, you know? Uh, and kind of in, in between, you know? But um, so, so certain acts, they, they, they like that. Other other guys don't. So you gotta be versatile. And I just wanted a clean tone going to everybody. You know, that was my main concern. And to capture, because one of these days, that, that Moonburst is gonna, something's gonna happen to it. I'm, I'm gonna retire it now, so I'll just use it on records. But. Uh, this last Rainier Fog Tour will be probably the last time I use that bass, you know, now that we got these happening, you know. So, so what's up? So now you have voice one, but now we gave you another voice. Oh, oh, yeah, and at the time, yeah, and at the time you were saying, you know, I don't know what I want, I don't know what I want, but then you start looking into your catalog, you're saying, you know, we play a lot of scaled back stuff, whether I'm playing with heart, whether I'm playing with Alice in Chains, the acoustic stuff. So, yeah, do you want to take up, we can take up distortion. So yeah, no, so you play a lot more like laid back kind of stuff. So why don't you show us what you do in voice two, which is the, he has a push pull. So when he pulls it out, it becomes voice two. It's a whole new voicing. It's like installing a new set of pickups the second he hits the switch. Yeah, and it's really nice for me and my tech loves it. So uh, he's a lazy bastard like myself. So we try to make it as easy as possible not to screw everything up. That's our main thing. There's like. A lot of people apparently are paying attention to what we're doing. <laughs> it's not like the old days. So, but like so, um, you know, I use a lot of hollow body stuff um, for songs like say "No Excuses" or uh, "Your Decision," uh, anything like "Got Me Wrong" or "Brother," anything off the Jar Flies record. So, um, play, not, a, play a couple of riffs. Show okay. us. Yeah, this isn't my amp, so I don't know what's. Uh, our examples are like no excuses or like your decision uh, got me wrong or brother you know I just want to be able to not do a bass change so much you know um, I really do like the Warwick Hollow bodies though you know but, but when I'm in the recording studio and we're doing like uh, mellow stuff and I only got a couple few basses and I'd go do say um, like, uh, I just recently did Mark Morton's solo record from Lama God and stuff so you know I can't bring the Alice and Chains rigs down to these studios so I just gotta you know, I, I, I throw a bunch of stuff in my truck and take it down there. So I, for me, um, and, and which is why we got the two different kinds of sets. We got one, you could just get the, the Legacy Series, my, my pickup, or you can get one with their pickup and my pickup. So now I'm exploring how to get um, like another pickup in there, just have more options to get producers and sound guys and uh, so underneath the hood of this particular soap bar is actually a reverse P. 
Yeah, so, it's not a P-Base, but a reverse P-Base, just yeah. like the original Moonverse. And Mike's original Moonverse actually had a, a J in there, but it was non-functional, or you didn't use it, correct? Yeah, I think it just didn't work. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Like, uh, so now I can now I can go and I can play no excuses for instance, right? Right? It's a little loud too. Somebody's been playing this. <laughs> Cut it out, right? Everybody yeah. at NAMM. Yeah, yeah. So anyways, yeah, so... Yeah, just it gives a lot of versatility. So now I got like a... Like a it's a hot rodded P-Bass, basically, on the other, uh, the other thing, you know? <laughs> well, guys, we've actually been on for about 20 minutes, but guys, thank you so much. This is Mike Inez. Oh, I certainly appreciate you guys. Don't forget to buy his Legacy Series pickups in four or five string single sets, whatever it is that you guys want. But guys, it's really special for us to have him on our stage, and it's been amazing for him to have him as an artist. Thank you very much. For Fishman, here. too. For every pickup you buy, Fishman is going to take you and your family to a Hawaiian vacation, or they're going <laughs> to uh, <clears throat> buy you a Lamborghini. Yeah. Look under your chairs right now. There's a set of... <laughs> <laughs> or Thank they, you guys. they will do a murder for you. If you just send us back the receipt, write the name on the back, and it never fucking happened, right? Um, <laughs> know a thing. Thank you guys very much. Thank you.